Everything might not be fun. Yeah, the politicians keep saying, what's why is their healthcare system so expensive? And like, duh. How does that make any sense? We'll figure it out. This is the thing. I'm just getting totally engaged now. And I don't know what to do. Hi, I'm in the South River of uh, Chesapeake Bay um, kayaking. So I know it's, it's not running, but I'm actually kayaking to a path I could run at. Um, and I just wanted to talk, kind of summarize a little bit of some of the stuff we've been talking about. Because really, we're, you know, we're talking about hard stuff and tests and drugs and stuff like that. But what, what really are the consequences? I mean, what's the importance of this to you as a patient and to the system in general? You know, I think it's really important to know that the system itself which, like we've talked about, squanders a trillion dollars uh, every year in unnecessary costs, is falling apart. And this is the reason why. The reason why is because of all these extra tests, all these extra drugs that really have no value to anyone getting them. And, you know, the, the importance to you, of course, is that you don't need this stuff, and it could hurt you. You know, it's, it's a great illusion that it is the hardest thing for me to tell my patients, to, to get them to understand. You and I think they do, sometimes it falls apart. But the, the illusion is that we actually can answer the questions that you come to us to answer. That, that you know, if you have a concern, whether you have heart disease, whether you might get a heart attack, that we actually could tell you. We could do some tests or blood work. That we could give you drugs and then everything's gonna be okay. You know, it's that illusion, it's a, it's a grand illusion. It's not that simple. There's a lot of stuff we don't know. You know, we, we have to accept that fact. And as a patient going into a doctor's office, you, you put your trust in us that we're gonna tell you the truth. And often what we do is just give you a bunch of malarkey. We just tell you stuff that sounds good, it's easy. Yeah, we're gonna get a stress test on you, we'll tell you if you have heart disease. Yeah, we're gonna check cholesterol on you and we're gonna treat you. We're gonna do some tests to see why you have Alzheimer's disease and we have these great medicines for you. It doesn't work. And, and you know, the more you as a patient, the more society buys into this notion that we have this great way to fix everything and it's so simple, the farther away you get from actually understanding how to actually treat yourself. Which, you know, takes some discipline. Which, which means you have to really work on things that aren't always easy. And you also have to accept uncertainty. That's the hardest thing of all, accepting uncertainty, I think. You know, when you go to an office of your doctor, and you say, doctor, I wanna know, do that test to tell me if I have prostate cancer. And I say, you know what, there is a test, it's called a PSA, but it stinks. A lot of people who have a normal test will have prostate cancer, and a lot of people with an abnormal test won't. And you know what, in some ways it doesn't matter because even if we find the prostate cancer, most people do well and the people who wouldn't do well, it doesn't matter when we find it. I mean, that, you don't want to hear that stuff, but that, that's the truth. You know, the, the doctors that are just so definitive and they come at you and say, we're going to do this and, and we're going to do this test and we're going to take care of it and fix it. People love those doctors. Those are what I call in my book, the thorough doctors. The doctors who say we're going to do a bunch of tests and we're going to fix it. But it's just not true. Way back in the day, there was a doctor named William Osler. And his vision of what's actually important in medicine was the vision in about 1900. And there was another guy named Flexner. He came in and he, he said, no, this vision is not right. So what were these two visions? Because in the end, although a lot of people have heard of Osler, no one's heard of Flexner, Flexner won. Osler's vision was, we have to listen to the patient. We have to see what the patient says. He has lines like, if you give a patient a medicine for a problem, now you have the problem and you have the problem with the medicines. I, I mean, way back in the day, Osler got it. He understood. There wasn't a simple solution to things. The more we give to people, the more we test people, the more problems we actually create. But if we listen to patients and we work with patients, and there are some tests and treatments that are good, then we will actually make progress. Flexner, it was all about science. There's a right answer and a wrong answer. 
The Flexner Report, which came out in 1910, changed the whole way that medical education is. It became not a, a nuanced field where you talk to patients and figure things out. To Flexner, there was a right and wrong answer. It was all about studying science and then finding the right answer. Flexner was dead wrong. But in the end, that's what we are now. That's what medical schools are now. That's what doctors are now. You guys, when you come into a doctor's office, you're part of an algorithm. We check off boxes and send you on your way. We don't discuss things with you. We don't explain that there's nuance, there's no right and wrong answer, but we can do the best we can. We don't explain uncertainty. It's all about uncertainty. So the reason I'm talking about all this with you and, and we'll continue is because you have to really understand when you go to a doctor's office that what the doctor's saying to you may not be the whole truth, may not be everything that will help you make a good decision. And you gotta ask other questions. So I feel my job is to give you some information. I have it on my blog, got it in my book, and I'll give you as much as I can here. Um, but you guys are in charge, and the way we're gonna change the world in the medical system is for you, you, and only you, to exert yourself and to say, I demand the truth. I want the truth. So, now I gotta go run. And I'll think about uh, a better way to explain it because it's really hard. Hey, so if you're equally annoyed by our dysfunctional healthcare system and all the garbage you're being fed, then give me an email, log on to my website, which is listed down here. Let me know what you want me to talk about and I'll just keep feeding you information and we'll discuss this and hopefully make some changes. See you later.